page for Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. All righty, Virginia, we won this thing! Republican Glenn Youngkin defeated Democrat Terry McAuliffe in Virginia's gubernatorial race, becoming the first Republican to win a statewide race in the Commonwealth since 2009. Multiple news outlets, including the Associated Press, called the race with 95% of the vote counted. Youngkin, a former private equity CEO, had 51% of the vote, and McAuliffe, a former Virginia governor himself, had 48% of the vote. This is our Virginia to build together, and we are going to go to work on day one. Kerry Pickett, Mika Selner, and Seth McLaughlin report Youngkin's win led a Republican sweep of Virginia's top statewide races. Winsome Sears won the lieutenant governor's race, becoming the first woman and woman of color to win a statewide office in Virginia, and Jason Miares will be Virginia's next attorney general, unseating incumbent Mark Herring. Turnout was up across Virginia and set a new record for gubernatorial elections. President Biden carried the Old Dominion by 10 percentage points just a year ago. An analysis by the Tax Foundation estimates that President Biden's $1.75 trillion social spending bill could eliminate more than 103,000 jobs over the next decade and add $750 billion to the federal deficit. The nonpartisan fiscal watchdog's estimate is based on a thorough analysis of the White House's spending framework and the corresponding 1,600-page bill text that's been released, according to our congressional reporter, Harris Alec. The foundation estimates the bill would reduce long-run economic output by nearly 0.4 percent and eliminate about 103,000 full-time equivalent jobs. Biden administration officials counter by saying all of the spending programs proposed by the bill are fully funded. The White House estimates that tax hikes included in the package would generate nearly $2 trillion in revenue over the next 10 years. Communities across the country are rethinking their decision to remove police officers from school campuses amid an uptick in incidents involving students, guns, and fights, our Emily Zanto reports. In Desert Springs, Nevada, local lawmakers who pulled police from five public high schools this year reversed their decision last month and renewed their contracts. And in Santa Cruz, California, public school officials returned a police officer to a district high school last month. Both moves came after knife incidents happened at the schools. Additionally, in Rochester, New York, leaders from four local education unions sent a letter last month asking public school district officials to reconsider their decision to remove police from schools. The National Association of School Resource Officers reported the number of gun-related incidents in schools from August 1st to October 1st more than tripled this year, from 29 to 97. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. Don't have access to the Times yet? Visit WashingtonTimes.com slash Georgian at 25% off your annual subscription. China and Russia have dramatically accelerated their naval shipbuilding and modernization programs in recent years. While the U.S. has struggled to improve its capacity for warfighting missions and has been tagged with a poor readiness rating from national security analysts. Military reporter Mike Glenn reports the Chinese maritime buildup made global headlines a year ago when their total fleet of about 350 warships surpassed the roughly 300 maintained by the United States. The American force still vastly outstrips China's in terms of power projection, however. The U.S. has 11 active aircraft carriers, and China has brought just two online since 2012. And finally, the U.S. Navy Memorial will unveil a sculpture on Veterans Day in honor of war dogs, the first of its kind in the nation's capital. Sean Salai reports the statue will join exhibits permanently at the Memorial's Visitor Center in D.C. in recognition of all men and women of the sea services and the canines who fought and died for the country, according to the sculptor. Modeled on a photograph taken in Afghanistan, the larger-than-life statue depicts a sailor seated with his right hand holding a gun and his left hand touching his dog. Find all of today's front-page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash frontpage or on the Washington Times app, and follow us for free on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Just search Washington Times. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.